lead us in prayer. This morning I'm reading from Psalm 75, verses 1, 2, and 3. The Word says, We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks, for your name is near. Men tell of your wonderful deeds. You say, I chose the appointed time. It is I who judge uprightly. When the earth and all its people quake, it is I who holds its pillars firm. Amen. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his holy word, and may we take his word seriously into our hearts. Let us this morning worship him. Let us give him this time and give him our hearts. Let us pray for this service and pray for each other and repent of our sins. Would you please lift up your hearts with me right now and lift, feel free to lift up your voices in unison. Let us pray in the name of Jesus together. Father, mighty God, we humble ourselves before you. We know that you are God Almighty and there is no other. And we know that you are holy and righteous. You are God and we, Lord, we are your people, Lord. Yes, Lord, we are sinners, but we believe in the blood of Jesus. Jesus, who is the Christ, our Lord, our Savior, the Son of God, that became the Lamb of God, that he may redeem us, Lord. And we believe in him when we want to worship you. Let your spirit be strong with us, Lord. Let your spirit engulf us, Lord, and fill us, Lord, and lead us and guide us for your glory. Let us be pleasing to you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for every soul and every person and every family, Lord, that hears this message and this service today. Would you bless them, Lord, as only you can? Maybe they're listening from home. Maybe they are here face to face. I pray for your blessings upon them, Lord, and that our worship would be sincere and from our hearts. Lord, we know that we are weak. We know that we're sinners unworthy. Lord, we trust the blood of Jesus. We trust what you have done for us. We have celebrated your birthday. We have brought in a new year, Lord. Now, Lord, give us your hope, Lord. May we have that hope as we worship. May your hope, Lord, be stronger in us. May we be nearer and nearer to you. May we give you all the glory and honor. Help us, Lord, to put away the world and give this time to you. Because, Lord, you are our God, the one and only. And it is in your name, Lord Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Now we're going to sing, Heart 10,000 Harps and Voices. Heart 10,000 Harps and Voices Sound the note of praise above. A Jesus reigns and heaven rejoices. Jesus reigns, the God of love. A see, he sits on yonder throne. And Jesus rules the world alone. Alleluia, 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 amen. King of glory reigns forever. Find an everlasting crown, a nothing from thy love shall sever. Those whom thou hast made thy home, happy charges of thy grave, destined to behold thy face. Alleluia, 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 amen. Their appearing, bring all bring. The glorious day of when the awful sovereign's hearing, heaven and earth shall pass away. Though with golden hearts we'll see, glory, glory to our King. Alleluia, 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 amen. Amen. Now we're going to sing, Our God Reigns. Lovely home, the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who brings good news. Oh, friends in peace, I'm down to years of happiness. Our God reigns, our God reigns. Our God reigns, our God 
Please stand with me. We're going to go to the Lord in worship. I ask that you repeat after me, Jesus is Lord. The Lord is good. Praise the Lord. Jesus is Lord. The Lord is good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated and turn in your Bibles with Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 8 through 17. I guess you notice I stuck to the script today. I want to keep you guys guessing as best as I can. But look at our scripture, Jeremiah 30, 8 through 17. Sister White will read for us in the Korean language. Sister White, please. Today's uh, Jeremiah 30, 8-17. 만군의 여호와가 말하노라 그날에 내가 내 목에서 그 명예를 꺾어 버리며 내 줄을 끊으리니 이방인이 다시는 너를 부르지 못할 것이며 너희는 너의 하나님 나 여호와를 섬기며 내가 너희를 위하여 일으킨 너의 왕 다윗을 섬기리라 그러므로 나 여호와가 말하노라 내종 야곱아 두려워 말라 이스라엘아 놀라지 말라 내가 너를 원방에서 구원하고 내 자손을 포로된 땅에서 구원하리니 야곱이 돌아와서 태평과 안락을 얻을 것이라 너를 두렵게 할 자가 없으리라 나 여호와가 말하노라 내가 너와 함께하여 너를 구원할 것이라 내가 너를 흩었던 그 열방을 진멸한다 할지라도 너는 진멸하지 아니하리라 그러나 내가 공도로 너를 징책할 것이요 결코 무제한 자로 여기지 아니하리라 나 여호와가 말하노라 내 상처는 곤칠 수 없고 내 창상은 중하도다 내 송사를 변호할 자가 없고 내 상처를 싸맬 약이 없도다 너를 사랑하던 자가 다 너를 잊고 찾지 아니하니 이는 내 허물이 크고 내 죄가 수다함을 잉하여 내가 대적에 상하게 하는 그것으로 너를 상하게 하며 진악한 자에 징계하는 그것으로 너를 징계함이었늘 어찌하여 내 상처를 인하여 부르짖느냐 내 고통을 낳지 못하니라 내 죄악의 큼과 죄의 수다함을 인하여 내가 내게 이 일을 행하였느니라 그러나 무릎 너를 먹는 자를 먹히며 무릎 너를 치는 자는 다 포로가 되며 너를 탈취하는 자는 탈취를 당하며 무릎 너를 악탈하는 자는 내가 그로 악탈을 당하게 하리라 나 여호와가 말하노라 그들이 쫓겨난 자라 하며 찾는 자가 없는 시원이라 한즉 내가 너를 치료하여 내 상처를 낫게 하리라 아멘. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 30 verses 8 through 17. In that day declares the Lord God Almighty, I will break the yoke off their necks. And will tear off their bounds. No longer will foreigners enslave them. Instead, they will serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. So do not fear, O Jacob, my servant. Do not be dismayed, O Israel, declares the Lord. I will surely save you out of a distant place, your descendants from the land of their exile. Jacob will again have peace and security, and no one will make him afraid. I am with you and will save you, declares the Lord. Though I completely destroy all the nations among whom which I scatter you, I will not completely destroy you. I will discipline you, but only with justice. I will not let you go entirely unpunished. 
This is what the Lord says. Your wound is incurable. Your injury beyond healing. There is no one to plead your case. No remedy for your sore. No healing for you. All your allies have forgotten you. They, they care nothing for you. I have struck you as an enemy would and punished you as would the cruel because your guilt is so great and your sin so many. Why do you cry out over your wound, your pain that has no cure? Because of your great guilt and many sins, I have done these things to you. But all who devour you will be devoured. All your enemies will go into exile. Those who plunder you will be plundered. All who make spoil of you, I will spoil. But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord, because you are called an outcast, Zion, for whom no one cares. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, mighty God, we humble ourselves before you, and we thank you, Lord, for this holy word. We thank you for this message, and I thank you, Lord, for these people who receive it and who hear it. May it accomplish your good and perfect will. May it touch our hearts. May we have eyes to see and ears to hear what you have for us this day. Let us draw nearer to you through this word. Open our hearts. Penetrate us, Lord, with this word. Because your word is like a double-edged sword. And we want to gladly take it as far as we can because we want you to be pleased with us. And it's in your name, Lord Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. God chases us. You know, I've not seen any lately uh, on uh, uh, TV or in the news, but I used to be a lot of uh, police were chasing people in videos on the news. Y'all remember seeing those where they'd have them in the news, they'd make news, they'd have the pictures of them, the chase scenes, and, and you know, like, the police were trying to give them a parking ticket or something, something very simple, really nothing, and they decided to run to try to get away from the police. I often, what were those people thinking, you know? I mean, goodness gracious, I mean, I mean maybe they were in trouble, they were going to get a parking ticket, but now they're making things much worse. They certainly weren't thinking about all the other people whose lives they, they were put in danger by, by driving so fast and so recklessly. Uh, many people who just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time were either killed or, or injured because of those people who were running made a bad decision. Some of you have been around long enough to remember we had a civilian who died on Redstone Arsenal because the police was chasing someone and they ran on the arsenal uh, that was before they put up the ropes or barricades at the gate. And actually a civilian died on post from someone running the red light. These things happen because, you know, when I was watching these on the, on the news, it used to make me mad. I used to actually get angry watching this happen, those chase scenes, because I knew that those people running, they had no respect at all for other people and, and they had no respect or accepted the authority of the police and I used to get angry at it and I guess you can tell right now I'm not real happy with it thinking about it you know I guess though if you think about it we're all running a little bit we're running from someone or something most of our lives we run from circumstances we run from our responsibilities. We run from, you name it, you fill in the blank. I think most of us are running from something. Many of us even run from God. In fact, most of us, or all of us, have run from God at one time or another in our lives. Like we think we can get away from him. But yet, even though we're running, God still is chasing us. He's still after us. Think about it. Think about it. There is another equal, intensive pursuit going on. You and I are driving sometimes at, at breakneck speed through life, aren't we? We're, but we also are aware. We're aware that someone more powerful is chasing us, pursuing us. 
And like the people we saw, though running doesn't make any sense, we do it anyway. It doesn't make sense to run from God. It doesn't make sense. And yet we do it anyway. Like the drivers we saw, we're self-destructing our, our lives as we run. But we do it just the same. We know who's coming after us. We know who's chasing us. We know who is pursuing us. We know God is right behind us. God will not let us go. But we keep on running anyway, don't we? When God pursues us, we can either keep on running, hoping that he can't catch up, or, or we can hide, hoping that he will not find us. But we need, we absolutely need to let God's love catch us. The prophet Jeremiah, he saw that. Here in our scripture, he knew that the people of Judah had chosen to go their own way and that they were paying a terrible price for their wandering. They were off there in exile and they were snatched out of their homes and their families were taken to a strange land as captives. They thought because they were in Babylon and not at home in Jerusalem that God couldn't reach them up there. They forgot about God even there. They thought that they were beyond the grasp of God. But Jeremiah knew otherwise. Jeremiah knew that God was able, and not only was he able, he was willing to chase them and to bring them back home. Hallelujah. Jeremiah hears God declare that he will save his people. Verse 10 of our text says, So do not be afraid, Jacob my servant, do not be dismayed, Israel, declares the Lord. I will surely save you out of a distant place, your descendants from the land of their exile. Jacob will again have peace and security, and no one will make him afraid. Amen. God is saying this, basically. I'm going to paraphrase. He's saying, I'm going to save you from far away and not even your offspring from the land of their captivity. Jacob will return and have quiet and ease. I'm going to save you from far away, says the Lord. I'm chasing you, and no matter where you go, I'm going to chase you. If somebody is chasing you, as I've said before, there's two things you can do. Either you can keep on running and hoping to put distance between yourself and your pursuer, or you can go into hiding and hope that that person cannot find you. And there's two patient also responses to God's pursuit too. When God comes looking for us, either we can keep on running, hoping to put more and more distance between us and him, or, and, or we can sort of try to hide from him. We can put on camouflage and, and hope that he won't notice us. Just know this. Whichever method you choose, God is pursuing something and he is pursuing a love relationship with us. And that relationship that he desires with us is personal. It's real and it's personal. He's not going to give up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He's not going to give up. You see, God never gives up. You and I get tired. We get depressed. God is always the same. Hallelujah. If he ever loved you, he will always love you. Hallelujah. And as we know, God does love us. So he's never going to give up. Let's think about a few things. First, running from God. How do we run from God? You know, many people... They make that first choice, and that choice is to run from God. They are hoping to put more and more distance between themselves and God. 
Some run and deeper and deeper into the woods trying to get away. They run from God by pouring themselves into immoral, faithless life. That's how they run from God. They indulge themselves in sin more and more and more. They're, they're ignoring God's commands. They commit things that sort of fly in the face of all that God is and all that God has made for us. This is actually the way that most of the world runs from God. Most run from God by doing whatever they feel like doing. They ignore God and say he doesn't even exist. They break God's heart by breaking his commands. They ignore God's will. They murder, they steal, they commit adultery, they lie, they cheat. So what else is new? I guess that's what I would ask uh, because this is not exactly news. We know that, right? This has been around for, since the beginning of time, very long time, and there is a very precise term by which this running from God is called. This is a word that uses for this kind of behavior. And obviously you know the word. The word is sin. Sin is anything that separates us from God. Sin is that thing deep down in the human heart that rises up and causes us to rebel against God. We run away from Him. Sin means separation from God. Sin is violating God's laws and running from him. And I say that that's old news, personally. But what so, you know what is so devastating about sin? Is that sin just reinforces itself and multiplies itself. It deepens itself. It gets worse and worse. The longer you sin, the more sin you will do, and it'll get worse and worse. Think about this. Just start the habit of profane language, cussing. And before long, you'll be cussing and not even thinking about it because it will control your language. The venom just sort of spews out all the time. Start the practice of abusing alcohol, and before long, alcohol will take you over. Any drug, anything you want to do, Start telling lies, and pretty soon you have to create another lie to cover over your first lie. And there's no way out. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I can remember when I was younger and when I used to lie, if it, the fish got big, it had to get bigger to cover myself. You see, sin gets deeper. Sin gets more and more you in its grip. You get more and more hardened to it, too. More and more separated from God. You've probably gone through some of this that I'm talking about yourself. You probably know exactly what I'm talking about. We run harder and harder from God, and we actually wire ourselves out. And But we keep running anyway. But did you know that the more we run from God, the more he chases us? Think about that for a second. The harder we run, the faster we run, the more God comes after us. The more we fight God, the more he comes after us. And he does it in love. Did you know that the more we spit in the very face of God, the more he reaches out? and tries to claim us. When God ch uh, chastises us, it's because he loves us. Listen to God's account here of his ways in verse 11 of our text. He says, I'm with you and will save you, declares the Lord. Though I completely destroy all the nations among which I scatter you, I will not completely destroy you. I will discipline you, but only in due measure. I will not let you go entirely unpunished. To me, that sounds like a loving father. 
Then in verse 15, God says, Why do you cry out over your wound, your pain that has no cure? Because of your great guilt and many sins, I have done these things to you. When you see a person who appears to be bent on destroying their life, you're also seeing a person that God is really pursuing, chasing very hard. And God is not going to give up. God is never going to stop caring for people. Hallelujah. God is pursuing a love relationship that is real and personal. God does not give up. Now, how do I know this? How do I know this? How can I say this? Because God came to this earth looking for a lost and broken humanity. Hallelujah. Our God came in the person of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Jesus the Christ, living where we live and feeling what we feel. Hallelujah. He did that looking for those who were so lost. He said himself, I came to save those who are lost. Our God went so far as to climb up on the cross high on a lonely hill outside the city and give his life and give his blood for those who were running from him and running and running and running. Hallelujah. That's how much God chases us. That's how much God loves us. Our God pursues every person who has been running away from him. And the harder you run, the harder God runs after you. But there's also something else that we do. We hide from God. We have people hiding from God. Remember that there's another way here to try to escape from God. In addition to running uh, into open sin, some of us hide from God. Some of us hide in our goodness and our righteousness. This is getting a little bit closer to home. This might be, we might see ourselves here if we're not careful. Some of us use our goodness, our self-righteousness to stay away from God, to keep him at arm's length. But know that our God pursues not only those that run from him, he also chases those who hide from him. And God does not give up. You know that some of us try to avoid God by being as good as we can be. Some of us are trying to earn our salvation. Some of us think that if we just simply be good citizens, decent people, help other people, stay out of trouble, keep on the right side of the law, do as good as we can do, we're okay. I mean, surely God will have to send us to heaven, wouldn't he, as long as we're good citizens and, and we help people and, and, and we do the right things? Isn't God, doesn't God have to send me to heaven because I do that? We're such good and nice people. But I say to you, some of us are not so much running from God as we're trying to hide from God. You see, we camouflage ourselves with our own goodness. With our own goodness. I have to talk to those who, those church folks, because they've always been church folks. If you know what I'm trying to say here, that, that's just what decent people do. They go to church. I have to talk to those of us who hung around religion almost all our lives. But we have a dirty little secret. And that is that we've never really let God close enough to us to be in our hearts. We've never let God penetrate us through our thicket of defenses. We've never had a real up-close, personal relationship with God. And because of that, we are hiding from God. 
We're hiding behind the walls of respectability and conventional goodness, and, and we're even hiding in church. I've actually had people ask me, tell me, answer me, uh, uh, when I've asked them if they're going to go to heaven or hell when they die, and they say heaven, and I'd say why, and they say because I go to church. Is that all it takes? Just go to church? People don't understand, you see. Now, many do this for quite a few years. They, they put on a good front, but they do not have a real fellowship with God. They don't really pray. They just try to look good. They don't really read God's Word and, and ask, what does this Word say to me in my life? They just depend on their camouflage of goodness. You know, I remember early in my ministry many years ago, for some reason I remember what young people say to me because it's so profound. But a young person told me that they didn't feel like they really needed to read God's Word. And I asked them why they felt that way, and they sort of surprised me with their answer, but yet I understand what they're saying. I don't agree with it, but this is what they said. They said, we don't, I don't need to read God's Word because you know what? That's what the Sunday school teacher and the pastor's job is. I will learn from them is what they said. And you know what? I understood what they were thinking, but then I reminded them of something. If you do that, then you really don't have a personal relationship with God. You cannot have a personal relationship with God if you go through me. You cannot have a personal relationship with God if you go through your Sunday school teacher. There's only one way you can go to God, and that's through himself, Jesus the Christ. You don't need the pastor to be in the middle. You don't need a friend to be in the middle. You need to have a personal relationship with God. You cannot go through me. You cannot go through your Sunday school teachers. You go directly to Jesus Christ. People who are hiding from God don't witness in a personal way or a positive way to others. They tend to just hide in the church and to think that they have fooled everyone. But there's one that they have not fooled, and he's the one that's chasing them. He chases them. He chases them with love. He chases them because he wants to have a personal relationship with them. People who are hiding from God just, you know... Do you know that you can keep all the rules? You can keep all the rules and, and still be out of fellowship with God. Do you, do you know that you can be on the rolls of the church and, and sitting in the pew and you're still hiding from the living God? Or are you aware that you can put on a mask of looking good and, and you can have a sort of a pose of pious or very proper attitude and still be out of touch with the heart of God. Thank you. I was going to wait. We try to avoid that intense and personal and real face-to-face -face encounter with the living God, don't we? With many of us, we, we try to avoid that, that personal, that face-to-face -face encounter with the living God because to do so, we have to humble ourselves and cover our faces and know that we are sinners. And we avoid that. And, and you know what that is? That's hiding. That's hiding from God. That's self Righteous camouflage. If we don't pray, we're not in touch with God. We're just putting on a mask. If we don't study His Word, we're not putting ourselves in His path. 
We're just holding him at arm's length. And if we're not serving him in some type of ministry, some kind of ministry, if we're not serving him in some ministry, if we're not willing to risk ourselves for God, then I suggest to you that we're just trying to look good rather than be good. We should all be in some type of ministry. We should all be willing to give ourselves. And if we're not doing it, then it's camouflage. We're just, what we used to say, a word I used to know is we're blowing smoke. Often we just blow smoke, that's all we do. But, I love the word but sometimes, and sometimes I hate it. This is one of the times I love the word but. I have good news. God is still chasing us, even those that are hiding. God is pursuing not only the blatantly sinful unbelievers, the rebellious outside those walls, God is also pursuing those inside us who have hidden sins and secret faults and who hide and who don't get a good relationship with him. He's chasing us too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God pursues a love relationship, even with those who would hide from him under the cloak of respectability. God does not want just our names on the church roll. He don't want us just to go to church. God wants fellowship with us. And that's why he pursues us, and that's why he will never give up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think that's a good but, don't you? So in closing, when God chases us, we can either keep on running, hoping that he cannot catch us, or, or we can hide, hoping that he won't find us. We need to let his love, the love of God, catch us. It's time to quit running, and it's time to come out of hiding time to quit running from God and it's time to set aside the camouflage. We don't have to run anymore because he's going to pursue us no matter what we do. Wouldn't it be easier for us so much more satisfying just to let God catch us? We cannot hide any longer. Just, just just maintaining self-control is not going to get us anywhere, especially into heaven. We truly have to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Because he's going to find us no matter where we go. He's going to have, he's going to, he's going to find us. He's going to keep chasing us. Wouldn't it be easier and so much more satisfying just to open our hearts up to him? Later in Jeremiah 31, this is what Jeremiah 31, 3 says. God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. That's what the pursuer is saying. God is going to keep on chasing us. Why not just let go and let his love catch us? God is pursuing a love relationship with us. He wants it to be real. He wants to embrace us. Why should we tie ourselves up and exhaust ourselves and fight? Uh, what did Jesus say? Kick against the gold, the bricks? You know, why should we do that? Why don't we just give up and let God have us? Why not just give up right now? Why not just let Jesus come into your heart for real today and forevermore? It'll change your life. <laughs> It'll change your life. And God will catch you. Hallelujah. Let's pray.